my name is Michaela. I love to read and I love to talk. So let's talk about some books. Read the Hunger Games trilogy, saga, all four of these books for the very first time at 25 years old. How I went my entire life up until this point without reading this series is beyond me as much as it is to you. I have a lot of thoughts. So consider this like my review, my comparison between the books and the movies, and if you are also in your Hunger Games renaissance via Netflix putting them all back on streaming platforms for us, please keep watching. Like I'm like holding this like a little baby. So I will just stick it right here. First wanna say that I think the casting overall was absolutely amazing. Um, when I watched the movies, like when I was younger, obviously I really enjoyed it, but reading the books and being able to see how these characters are explained um, in the books, then to see them back on screen, they really did a great job. Um, for example, Kale, Kale, no, Gale and Katniss are explained as being almost cousins. Like they look so much alike. They have the same hair color, they have the same eye color, and Liam Hemsworth, and Jennifer Lawrence literally look like siblings. They look so similar, especially in the movies, like the way they edited it. This is my reading buddy, Max. You wanna come here? I just think they did such a good job. PETA is described as being this like blonde, stocky bread boy. And I think Joss Hutcherson really embodies that to a whole. I think in terms of casting, I think Jennifer Lawrence did a wonderful job of portraying Katniss, like her attitude. I just think it was, it was so well done and I didn't appreciate it as much when I watched the movies for the first time as I have now that I'm kind of rewatching the movies back now as an adult after having read these books. And on that note, I also feel like Joss Hutcherson, again, casting was great, but he did a really job. Good job at portraying our lovely Peta, Illy Peta, Peta for life. The only kind of criticism I feel like I will give, it's not Joss Hutcherson's fault, but Peta in the books is hilarious. He's a flirt, he's hilarious, his personality is like amazing. And I feel like we don't see that as much in the very first Hunger Games movies. We kind of see it more in Catching Fire, but I would have loved to see his personality more in the first movie, because in the books he is like amazing and charismatic and so funny all throughout, even in super serious conversations, which I think adds kind of a light tone to it. The topic of Catching Fire. It stays being my favorite movie, and it is officially now my favorite book out of all four, including about Songbird and Snakes. Catching Fire is definitely my favorite book. By far, best story. I just have to do with Finnick O'Dare, Mr. Sam Claflin being involved. I don't know, you tell me. I also make a TikTok where they said they feel like Finnick is what Gail thinks he is, and I really haven't been able to get that out of my mind. Finnick is the fighter, he is the soldier, he is like that one that basically has that brother-sister relationship with Katniss that isn't portrayed so much in the films as it is in the books, um, that is always there for her, that I think is what Gail thinks he is, but Finnick actually is. Completely platonic, not romantic at all. I wish that we saw that more in the movies. He is definitely like one of Katniss's best friends. And we definitely get that I think like in the Mockingjay, especially Mockingjay part two, but from Catching Fire to Mockingjay part one, he is Katniss's best friend. Doesn't have Peeta at this time and she really clings on to Finnick. And I wish, I wish that we saw more of that in the film than we did. On the topic of Mockingjay, that film to me, misses the mark the most. Mockingjay part one and Mockingjay part two miss the mark in terms of being an adaptation from the books. And I will tell you why. Books are darker. The books are more realistic. The books deal with trauma a lot more, even addiction. And I think it's just a way more accurate representation of how Katniss would feel, of how Finnick would feel, of how Joanna would feel if they actually went through this. Everything they went through with the games, everything they went through with Snow, especially Joanna being captured, I think it is just portrayed way better in the books than it is in the films. They kind of gloss over it a little bit. Like, yeah, we know Joanna is going through it in the film, obviously, but we really get way more insight in the books. And I get it, right? Not every single thing we read in the books is gonna be in the movies, but it was a part one and part two, so they had time, and there was stuff they included in the movies that wasn't even included in the books. And so just, if anybody cares about one gal's opinion about the movies, I think the Mockingjay movies missed the mark. I think they missed the mark. And just like I said, with Finnick and Katniss's relationship not being portrayed as much, Joanna and Katniss's relationship isn't being portrayed as much. At some, I guess, resolution, kind of towards the end of Mockingjay part two with them, but they were roommates in the Mockingjay book. They did 
did training together. They were like in so many training sequences. They were always with one another in Mockingjay. And I just feel like that like sisterly bond just wasn't shown in the movies. And I wish it was. I think it would have given a much greater character arc for Joanna than we saw in the movies. Now I feel like I'm just going on a rant and all the stuff that is in the books that's not in the movies. So I'm just gonna keep these good vibes going. Things I wish that were in the movies that were not is number one, Katniss losing her hearing from the very first game. She loses her hearing and in all of Catching Fire, she is deaf out of one of her ears and they don't talk about that at all whatsoever. Same topic of things being lost in the games. If you guys can remember in the movie when Kato slashes Peter with his sword, Katniss is able to get the medicine right and fix it. In the books, Peter loses his leg. He becomes an amputee. He has to have a, um, a new leg put on. And it's something that is, he's always dealing with, especially in Catching Fire in the game, so his leg is getting stuck. Um, and I feel like that would have been a great opportunity for some representation for disability that they, I guess, thought wasn't necessary. But in the books, Katniss's hearing and PETA being an amputee are two very important aspects I think they should have included. I also think that the movies obviously made the Capitol seem bad. Like we know the Capitol is the bad guy. We know that Snow is the main bad guy, right? Until Coin comes along. But in the books especially, it goes more in depth as to how the Capitol deals with their victors, deals with their tributes. Obviously we know Finnick's story is one of the all time saddest. He basically is forced to sell his body by the Capitol by Snow. In the books it also talks about how when Katniss kind of came out of the first games, like I were going back to her hearing, her hearing, and how one of um, her ears, she completely lost hearing. Senate tells her that the Capitol wanted to like perform cosmetic surgery on her. Make her more desirable as a woman, like put his foot down, him and Hamish, and they were like, no, do not touch her, fix her ear, and that is it. And that is an, like an aspect we completely missed out. Like the victors were very much sexualized in the books. I know Finnick touches on it in Mockingjay, just really how evil, um, evil the Capitol is, and evil the government is. I feel like I can talk about that initial trilogy forever, but I am gonna move on to Battle of Songbirds and Snakes. The most recent addition to the Hunger Games saga is the prequel actually to the entire trilogy, the trilogy that we know and love. A quick synopsis, if you have not either read the book or know what it's about, it is 65, 64, 65 years prior to Katniss's era. It's in the time during the 10th Hunger Games when a young President Cornelius Snow, not president yet, Cornelius Snow is like 17, 18 years old. Follows him, his like college year, the 10th Hunger Games and kind of what made him who he is. I know a lot of people are calling it his villain origin story. And while I get that, I think it's more just like an explanation of how Snow turned out to be who he is again during Katniss's era. Battle of Songbird and Snakes is so sad. A frustrating read, it's disgusting. You'll find yourself empathizing with Cornelius at some point and then you're gonna be mad at yourself for empathizing with him because you know he turns out to be with this really bad guy and at times in the book, he's also a really bad guy. Um, your emotions are gonna be like up, down, up, down, up, down a lot in this book. You're gonna find yourself rooting for him when you really feel like you shouldn't be rooting for him. The main things I want to talk about is, like I said, it's the 10th Hunger Games. At this point in Pan Am, um, the Hunger Games aren't as much of a spectacle as they are. I'm going to keep referring to it as Katniss's era. The head game maker, which is like so creepy, this head game maker. I've heard that Viola Davis is playing them in the movie and I'm very excited to see how she does with this character. I think she's going to kill it. He is like, how can I make this more of a spectacle. What can I do to make this more entertaining, to make it more interesting? Besides, completely rationally, not, that he is going to assign a student to each of the tributes. So 24 tributes, he's gonna have 24 different students that are like their age, like 17, 18 years old, to be their mentor. This is the 10th Hunger Games, there's not enough victors to be the mentors, like how Hamish is the mentor and Mags is Phoenix, right, because she won. He is assigning kids to mentor other kids. And to see how the Capitol children think of other kids that are their same exact age is so gross. See how the Capitol treats these children is so gross. I feel like in the Hunger Games movies, Katniss's era, he kind of referred to them as like preparing a pig for slaughter, right? They like fatten them up. They give them how Effie is like, oh, well, at least you're not gonna be here for that long, but you can enjoy this in the meantime. They like spoil them with food and riches and clothes and whatever they want. Or straight up the tributes put in the monkey exhibitor's zoo. 
are treated like animals. They are not given food. They are not given water. A handful of tributes don't even make it to the games because of starvation and dehydration. It's like so hard to read at some spots. The lack of regard for human life is so apparent in this book. That's where the whole empathizing with Snow comes into play because he ends up being a mentor to a girl from District 12 that has a lot of parallels to Katniss Everdeen. Her name is Lucy Gray. I'm sure you've seen the like edits of her on TikTok, but he is her mentor and he like goes above and beyond to like provide for her and get her food and get her water. There are some romance aspects to it. I don't wanna say too much about it since I know the book only did come out a couple of years ago. A lot of people haven't read it yet and the movie is gonna be coming out in November. You should read it if you, just like myself, recently went through 100 Games of Renaissance. Definitely think you should read it. It gives so much context as to how the games became what they are, the whole betting aspect, having it be televised, having it to be mandatory to watch across all of the districts, sponsorships even. The inception of the games is explained in A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'll say a criticism I have for it, not even a criticism, this is just something I wish was in it. Wish we saw more of Snow's political rise to power. At the end of this book, he's still like 17, 18 years old, and I wanna know what happens between 17, 18 year old Snow to like 70, 80 year old Snow that we know as the president. I wanna know what happened between him and Tigress. I don't know, I just wanna, I wanna know more. Like, I feel like this was almost like a history book for the Hunger Games, but I, I wanna know more about this world that Suzanne Collins has created for us to obsess over. Is I would say the slowest book. I feel like the Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay are very fast-paced books. A lot of a lot of stuff happens. Hunger Day is definitely the slowest moving one. Those are really good conversations. So and his tribute Lucy Gray talk a lot about human nature. He is under the impression that human nature is inherently good. He is under the impression human nature is inherently evil. And they have a lot of good conversations about that that I think is very interesting, especially because we know how snow turns out. We know how he ultimately ends up in the end. And so to see his thought process and viewpoint 60 plus years prior is so interesting. Overall, read these books if you haven't. If you read them when you were in like, I don't know, elementary school, junior high, high school, whenever, 10 plus years ago, I encourage you to reread them. The political commentary in these books being mirrored into how our current government is and current politics is, is crazy for lack of a better word that I cannot think of. Read these books. Talk to me about these books. I am very much in my Hunger Games era right now if you cannot tell. Thank you so much for watching. Please follow me, subscribe. My name is Adam Michaela's Reads on Instagram and TikTok. Come talk to me about books. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs>